Alright, so we are group 8A and this is our presentation on electrostatic forces of a balloon. The purpose of the ex this experiment was to find the charge of each balloon while they are repelling each other and the approximate number of electrons being transferred. The design of our experiment was while using two balloons with equal known masses, attach one to a meter stick with a, using a string of a known length. The other will attach to a vertical meter stick that is attached to a horizontal meter stick that is 10 centimeters apart from the string of the free balloon. Before recording data, make sure that the balloons have been grounded by touching them to something with a large mass or is grounded, i.e. a wall or a wall socket. Charge each balloon using a wool scarf and watch as the free balloon is repelled from the fixed balloon. Measure the distance between them once they are steadily repelling each other. Using the known values in the equation a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of c equals c squared, you can calculate the angle of the balloon while it is repelling. Using the equation for force of gravity, F equals mg, and the known mass of the balloons, you can determine the force of gravity on the balloon. Then once you know the value of the force of gravity, using trigonometry, you can determine the value of the tension force of the string on the balloon. Based off the free body diagram, you know that the force of electric value must be equal to, the, equal to and opposite the electric force value of the string on the balloon. Using this knowledge, you can find the force of the electric. Once you have determined the electric force, you can use the equation for electric force F e equals Kc times big Q times little q divided by R squared. You know the value of Fe and the value of R, and you can assume that both balloons have the same charge. You can, assume this or you can use this information to find Q. Because both charges are equal, big Q times little q becomes 2Q, so Fe equals Kc times 2Q all divided by R squared. Using the equation... For overall charge divided by charge per electron. <coughs> in this section we see the models that were used during our experiment. On the left hand side we have our system schema. We can see the Earth's gravitational force acting on balloons 1 and balloons 2, the electrical force of balloon 1 acting onto balloon 2, and then we also see how the strings forces were acting on balloon 2. On the right hand side we see a visual representation of the model we created and that was explained in our experimentation prior. Here we have a free body diagram of balloon 2, the strings force acting on balloon 2, the force of balloon 1 on balloon 2, and the force of gravity on balloon 2. Some assumptions we had while doing our experiment was that balloon 1 was completely fixed and not moving at all. Balloon 2, the blue balloon, is only moving in the x direction and both balloons had the same magnitude of a charge. Our model was moderately accurate because it only gave us measurements in the x direction and we did not consider the y or z direction. Measures we took to make it more accurate were that we used a meter stick to secure balloon 1 into a fixed position. This allowed us to only measure one moving object in one angle. The same person rubbed the wool skull onto both the balloons for the same number of times to create approximately equal charges on each balloon and for each trial. In our experimental design, two of the sides were fixed at one meter. The third length was measured right here. The three lengths were then plugged into this trig equation to get three thetas. The three thetas were then plugged into this triangle here. With the y component being the force of gravity on the balloon, the x component is what we calculated. Here is how we did that right there. So this is the overall force in the x direction that we know is countered by the electrostatic force. So we can put the force equal to that and then calculate the charge of each balloon for each of the three times. The, the charge was then divided by the charge of one electron in order to get the total number of electrons transferred, or at least an approximate number. So the average charge of both balloons was 2.81 times 10 to the negative coulombs. The average approximate number of electrons transferred when charging the balloon was 1.75 times 10 to the 12. Some limitations would be, we have to assume that the balloon is only moving in the x direction. We also have to assume that the balloons were the same height in order to do the calculations. In reality, one was a little higher than the other, but to keep it simple and not have to do a lot more trig, we got it easy. Possible sources of error is that the fixed balloon is being pushed against or around the meter stick. The free balloon was never truly still, it was always moving, but we just got a rough estimate. 
we had no real way of stopping it without moving the balloon. After another source of error would be after charging the balloons once, it is nearly impossible to totally neutralize the balloons.